Welcome to another Trump Teachings. Uh, I was wondering about the conundrum of how to handle all of these warrior decks. You see I've done one of each class already, but warrior in this meta of Whispers of the Old Gods has six legitimate decks as I talked about last time. There's Cthune Warrior, Nazoth Warrior, Control Warrior without Cthune and without Nazoth. In the more aggressive realm, there's Dragon Warrior, there's Tempo Warrior, and there's Pirate Warrior. And then there's that e there's even some oddballs out there, but basically those. The Control Warrior variants basically take the Cthulhu Warrior variant, and it plays much the same. And in the similar way, this Dragon Warrior deck is similar to Tempo Warrior as well as Pirate Warrior. It's kind of the midpoint between the two. With the Pirate Warrior deck, this deck wants to hit the face really hard. It has a lot of chargers, Wolf Rider, Argent Horse Rider. It has Heroic Strike and Mortal Strike. It has Leroy to finish. Very simple game plan. You play on curve, you hit the face. Uh, your weapons get tremendous value. You play a Fire War Axe. You upgrade it and that's plus, uh, plus 5 damage. 1 mana deal 5 kind of since the default Fire War Axe deals 3, but you upgrade it so it does 4, and it gets another charge, so uh, 1 plus 4 equals 5. You get another upgrade version with the Blood Sail Cultist. You add so much damage. In fact, upgrade is 6 damage, isn't it? Because a 3-2 becomes a 4-3. Basically, upgrading your weapon does a lot of damage. You hit him a lot with the weapon, and you upgrade your weapon, and then you hit him, and then you play Dread Corsair for free, and you play like a 6-3 Blood Sail Cult uh, Blood Sail Raider. It's really good. Look out for the combo of Nazoth's first mate plus Bloodsail Cultist. Then there is the more popular Tempo Warrior. The namesake is that this deck plays for Tempo. It has some really efficient cards. Use the Fire War Axe to control the game early. The Blood to Icker is a 1 mana, kind of 3 2, since you're dealing 2 2 and then dealing 1 damage. It's good. Uh, you have the Ravaging Ghoul, which clears off a bunch of zoo stuff, a lot of one health guys. Top end is Cairn, Malkarok, Ramish, Ragnaros, and Varian. Uh, you might even wonder why they use Tempo, but it just turns out this deck has a lot of value at the end and it just manages to keep up the pressure with efficient cards in the middle. Uh, but that leads us to Dragon Warrior, kind of the new kid on the block in terms of good warrior decks. Uh, it's like a Tempo Warrior deck, except it has Dragon Synergy. Is probably the best way of putting it. Uh, so you have Alex Strauss's champion benefiting a lot from dragon synergy. Two mana, three three charge. And you've got the four mana, four three charge. You've got your four mana, three six taunt. Five mana, five four deal three damage. Draconid Crusher, uh, six mana nine nine. This deck is the midpoint between the pirate and the tempo deck, and a lot of it has to do with Draconid Crusher. Uh, you hit them in the early game, down to 15, you play the Crusher and it finishes them off. Unlike Arena, this is not a win more card, when you play it as a 9-9, because you usually get your opponent to just like about 15 and then you play the Crusher, and it's actually very difficult to deal with because there's not that much hard removal out there right now. And then you finish them with Gromish and Ragnaros. Basically your cards are very efficient for their cost, hence gaining tempo. So in the early game of this deck, you're looking for Nazoth's first mate, Sir Finley Merkleton, Fire War Axe, Alex Rose's Champion, Fairy Dragon. If you have Alex Rose's Champion, Fairy Dragon, and Twilight Guardian are the best dragons to keep with it. Uh, against aggressive decks, you would want to keep Slam and Blood to Icker, though not going first. And having the first card be a 3-drop is kind of slow. Against Druid, though, this might be passable. I'll keep the Frothing Berserker because it's Druid. Bad card to keep if it's Shaman or Warlock though, since your 3 mana 2 4 would be a bit too slow. Might be tempted to keep Twilight Guardian because it's a cheap dragon enabler, but the only dragon you're really enabling is the champion, and you usually. Uh, there's a lot of dragons in this deck. There are 8 dragons? It's quite a lot. Uh, worth mentioning that it's often worth playing the 
cards even if you have no dragon. But yeah, that's really a bit of a draw. So when you have a crusher, you kind of want to base the game around trying to get your opponent down to 15. Uh, by the turn you can play the crusher. So plan out how you can do that. It usually involves hitting the face. Play on curve, hit the face, though kill key minions and make sure that they can't get too much of good trades against you. Uh, this Corruptor will be very strong on 5, and this Crusher is perfectly fine to play even if it's just a 6-6. Six, six. Best card would be a 4 drop right now, which is not really a surprise to follow the 2-3-4-5 the train. Oh, looks like the opponent ramped well. And that's a very efficient way to remove that. Suppose we didn't have executes in our hand. Uh, a play that might make sense is playing the Ravaging Ghoul and trading here. But better would actually be to hit the face and play Ravaging Ghoul anyways. Since that 4-3 uh, has to trade into the 3-2 or 3-3. Three, three. Uh, but then again there's also swipe. But with this deck you sometimes don't want to play around things. But I have an execute so the play is rather easy. But just good to know those if situations. So looks like we're on track to hit Draconid Crusher on uh, 6 for 9-9. Nine, nine. Well done, deck. Exactly 15. Uh, druids do not have answers to big guys, except usually they run one mulch. But if they don't have that mulch, that 6 mana 9-9 nine, nine is going to uh, crush their face in. Ah! Nice follow up. Um, assuming this gets mulched, which is the worst case, then these two will be a good follow up. Note that this is a tempo deck, you're pretty much just playing in curve. And I have had the fortune of getting a good curve. Hey, attention, class. Looks like the opponent is sad, does not have a mulch. Oh, oh man. Dragonid Grusher is one of those cards which looks like a win more card, but in a situation like this, it is just a, okay, getting that to be a 9-9 for 6 mana was really good, and it won me the game, even though I was not winning. Playing against Zoo is a pleasure with this deck. Hopefully it is Zoo. It's similar to Tempo Warrior in the sense of the matchup is good against you. Reason being, you have Fiery War Axe, you even have an Azos first mate, and Ravaging Ghoul is a really big deal. Uh, starting with an Azos first mate against you is incredible, because this 1-3 Rusty Hook can do a lot of work. However, uh, if he's not Zoo, since he didn't play a 1-drop, I'm going to start off with this card. I'll grab Fire Blast. It's a nice general purpose ability. Plus, I have two executes. Looks like the phone is actually a Reno lock. Uh, this is going to be similar to the Druid game, where the goal is just to hit him fast and hard. Uh, since I have the Fire Blast ability, I do not need to save that one. Uh, attack. So I'm going to go ahead and play this aggressively. To spawn a lot of stuff to kill him quickly. Buying or selling. <laughs> His hand's uh, certainly a bit weak with no dragons and getting clogged by two executes. Uh, usual best. Pickups with Sir Finley Murgleton 
uh, his ability. Life tap is probably best. The hunter hero power is possibly second best. And then the third best is just some mix of all of these. Fire blast is probably the third best. Due to the ability to get three mana assassinate with fire blast execute combo. He's almost in range to get Draconid crushed. Oh, almost played the dragon there. That would have been a bad idea. Had to play the card that has a dragon enabler. Control the board a bit. Uh, this deck isn't all that aggressive. But stuff that does damage will generally want to be pointed at minions still. The Reno deck wants to get rushed down, but since they have Reno and can come back, it's usually a good idea to at least slightly hedge. Go ahead and do another Fire Blast Execute combo. And I could play the uh, Queen Twilight Guardian, but Ragnaros the next turn looks pretty compelling, and the opponent is at 8. And sometimes he's gonna Reno Jackson here, but that's fine since I still have the board. You could play Twisting Nether to clear this board, that would lead to a victory with Queen Ragnaros. Is he fishing for Coil? Wait, that's the second Dark Peddler. My eyes are open. Hmm. Well, interesting. Maybe it's Reno Jackson with two Dark Peddlers. Maybe it's Hamlock. This deck tends to perform uh, slightly favored against the mid-range shaman because uh, mid-range shaman is a little bit slow. Temple warrior has a lot of tools that can defeat it. Uh, that and zoo, you can execute their seven-seven. You can fire war axe, cut a bit of their stuff, and your minions fight pretty well against theirs. We'll start off with great tempo here. Uh, as a general note, it's usually better to play the slow card over the fast card if you do not need the fast card immediately. That goes for Alex Strauss's champion and Core Corona Elite. Because if I play the champion and I hit him in the face for three immediately, uh, then I hit him again, that's six if I play the fairy dragon now. But with this play instead, I can still do six. Uh, should I? No, I'm just going to hit the face here. I have the ghoul against his 1-1. One, one. Uh, you can play around flame tongue totem, but that shouldn't be that important. Looks like he traded anyways. Alright, this is where you hope he doesn't have hex. As I casually play 3 mana 6-4. Oh, and also he only has two mana. That's not a lot of mana. Oh, cheat totem. Fortunately, we can uh, make sure that this cheating totem is out of the way. Very good, Draconid Crusher is activated. Good job. You've managed to make it so that Dragon and Crusher has a higher chance of getting through unfrogged. So sometimes you have the unfortunate circumstance where you kill them before you even play the Dragon and Crusher. But I suppose that's not that much of a problem now, is it?